By now you've probably heard a running theme in the Catholic media outlets that are defending Pope Francis. That theme is that the current crisis in the church is just an American issue. The narrative that is that outside of the United States, things are fine and dandy, and that you don't need to worry your silly little heads about the things going on. Just trust in the ruling elite of the church and ignore all the weird people who are now in the hierarchy and the history of truly nasty people getting promoted to top-tier jobs in the Vatican. It's all your imagination. Please trust us. One such example of this is from none other than Fake News Central itself, CNN, and why am I not surprised by this? CNN headline, The Coup Against Pope Francis. Even before Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano called for Pope Francis to resign on Sunday, the two men had a history and it wasn't good. Vigano, the former Vatican ambassador to the United States, angered some church officials in 2015 by arranging a meeting at the Vatican's embassy in Washington between the Pope and Kim Davis, the Kentucky clerk who refused to sign same-sex marriage certificates. During his trip to the United States, the Pope had tried to stay above the country's culture wars. Vigano foisted Francis right into the fray. The Vatican, which tried to distance the Pope from Davis, was displeased. Two years later, Francis quietly accepted Vigano's resignation. On Sunday, Vigano struck back. In an 11-page testimony released to conservative Catholic media, Bagagno accused Francis of ignoring his warnings about Archbishop Theodore McCarrick, who led the Archdiocese of Washington from 2000 to 2006. Under Francis's orders, McCarrick resigned from the College of Cardinals last month after accusations that he molested an altar boy and seminarians. But Bagagno said the Pope earlier had lifted restrictions on McCarrick put in place by Pope Benedict XVI, who resigned in 2015. I'd continue reading this piece, but you get the idea. There's been an attempt to cast this issue as a battle between the left and the right in the church. This truly is a stunning example of fake news that serves only to sow sin and division among the ranks of the laity. But it's not only CNN doing this. Catholic media and media figures are in on the stunt as well. Austin Ivore writes Pope Fa Francis fan fiction for a living. I'd say he was a Francis biographer, but that's being too charitable. Just take a look at these tweets. Philadelphia is not the new Avignon. But the United States resembles what France was for Catholicism in the 14th and 15th centuries. He tweets at Mr. Bean on the on the proto schism of some U.S. Catholics. Really, nothing better brings to life the gospel in our time than the astonishing ferocity and irrational hatred being directed at a transparently good and holy man. Wow. Okay. And finally. Pope summons to bishops conference presidents to a four-day meeting on abuse next February is an ingeniously efficient way of creating universally binding protocols, actions, and sanctions to make the church a global leader in safeguarding. Every crisis is an opportunity. Ivory may be the only person in the Catholic world who thinks that having a synod on the abuse issue in February is anything but tone deaf, especially since the abuse of seminarians and the homosexual cult in the church are not on the list of topics to be discussed. But then again, many of these people are simply cheerleaders for the morally bankrupt status quo. But this is all a variation of Cardinal Wuerl's infamous words spoken of in his now famous interview. I don't think this is some massive, massive crisis. It was a terrible disappointment. And for all of us, for you, for me, he was a friend to us. So we're saying now, well, what do we do in the future to see there's a mechanism so if somebody wants to say something about a bishop, they have a place to go. This narrative is about deflecting from the real issue. The coming synod in February will not address the real problems that need addressing, nor will it address the number of high-profile priests and prelates promoting homo heresy in the public square. Instead, this is being cast as a left versus right issue in order to marginalize those of us calling for resignations and meaningful reform of the church that is actually Catholic and is actually loyal to the traditions of the church. But apparently none of that is actually true. This isn't just an American issue, nor is it one that conforms neatly to a partisan ideological position. It seems that we live in the times when all secrets will come to the surface because the predatory network globally is being exposed. The following is from the Dutch online newspaper NCR. NCR is not to be confused with the National Catholic Register. Bishops and cardinals also maintained abuse in the Netherlands. Abuse in the Catholic Church, cardinals and bishops also covered sexual abuse in the Netherlands, which allowed perpetrators to make many more victims. NRC lined up which high church leaders contributed to this.
This is the news. 20 of the 39 Dutch cardinals, bishops, and auxiliary bishops were involved in abuse cases in the Catholic Church between 1945 and 2010. This is evident from an inventory of NRC. Four of them themselves abused children. 16 others placed pedophile priests who could make new victims elsewhere. The four assistant bishops who were personally guilty of abuses are Jan Nyanhaus, Joel Giesen, Philip Barr, and Jan Ter Schuur. None of the responsible bishops is still active. All matters are barred. Alliance Organization Women Platform Religious Child Abuse points out that the additional victims have fallen as a result of these practices. That article goes on to recount the abuse of children in the systematic cover-up perpetrated by the bishops, and how some of the abusers were themselves promoted to the Episcopate. I read the story in detail, but it's a Google translation from an all-Dutch article, and I don't want to, want to cause you physical pain from the bad translation. The link to the original article can be found on the sources page, which is linked below. The claim that this is simply an American issue is beyond dishonest. Just take this example from an Argentinian media outlet recounting the cover-up that Francis himself is alleged to have engaged in when he was the Cardinal Archbishop of Buenos Aires. It seems then that only the Pope has the power to punish his cardinals. So why doesn't he take stronger action? Maybe because he too faced accusations in his homeland of Argentina long before his election. Abemus, Papa. When he was Archbishop of Buenos Aires, he apparently tried to have a pedophile priest acquitted. In Buenos Aires, along with God, or rather Diego Maradona, the Pope is a star. His face is everywhere. And yet, some refuse to share in this iconographic cult. In the city center, we have arranged to meet a group of victims. They were abused by priests in the Archdiocese of Buenos Aires. They alerted Pope Francis when he was their archbishop. A todos los famosos eh, del mundo, Leonardo DiCaprio también fue a mostrarle el Oscar, a sí. todos, a todos les abre las puertas. No, y a nosotros no nos manda ni una tarjetita para decir no lo siento mucho. No espero nada, no le creo nada. Y sufrí mucho la decepción eh, y, y, me, y me dolió mucho que, que Bergoglio no haga nada. Y, y todo, el, todo el mundo a mí me decía que le escriba porque él me iba a contestar. Y, y sufrí, sufrí, sufrí mucho. Y, y estoy muy decepcionada. Add to this Honduras, the recent resignation of the Chilean bishops, as well as the bombshell report of the cover-up of more than 3,600 abuses by priests in Germany, as well as the rumors of similar cover-ups being exposed soon across Europe, and you see a pattern emerging, that there had been a systematic cover-up of homosexual predation by priests that was covered up by bishops, and that many of those covering up these attacks were in fact by, promoted by Pope Francis. It is enough to make a decent person sick. There's only one reason for a media narrative like that. There are some who will defend this papacy at all costs because they agree with Francis's political agenda to remake the church in his own left-wing image. This includes the normalizing of homosexuality in the church and the changing of traditional moral teachings about everything from the reception of Holy Communion for people living in objective states of moral bankruptcy and sin to the death penalty to promoting the gospel of Al Gore. It's all about continuing to suck up to the world. The church has grown worldly. It's time for faithful Catholics to re return to traditional Catholicism. For Return to Tradition, I'm Anthony Stein. If you like videos like this, please like and share this video, and please subscribe. I can be found on Twitter and Facebook with links in the description. Ave Maria.